Hey, it's Dave and Evelyn from The Camera Store, and today we're talking about Fujifilm. That's right, we have the new Fujifilm XS20. We have the Fujifilm X-Series APS-C censored camera. This is the X-S20. Now this is designed for being a content creation camera that can be used for both photography and video. Now our original plan was to get up somewhat early. and 10 a.m. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, to take some nice landscape shots of southern uh -huh. Alberta here, but we have a ton of forest fires in the area, so yeah. the smoke is very bad, and so the scenery shots aren't great. It looks yeah, and uh, of course our but... hearts go out to everyone that's been evacuated and have been dealing with this, but we are in the small town of High River. We're taking a look at some vintage architecture. There's some really cool murals and stuff like that. We just love exploring the small towns in our own backyard. So this is the XS20, and if you've been shooting with the XS10 from Fujifilm, you're going to feel right at home. It's based on the same body and the same design, but there are some improvements on this camera. Yeah, and if you're not familiar with what this body is all about, it's a fairly compact camera, but it has a nice deep grip to it. It's only 491 grams, so it's lightweight, and it's a great travel tool. Now, the other interesting thing is because this is a hybrid camera, it's designed for both photo and video, you'll notice that the control dials are unmarked. And what that means is you can customize it to a variety of different settings. Unlike cameras like the X-T4, which have like a dedicated ISO dial, um, this one you have two dials on the top that you can actually customize. Yeah, that's fantastic to be able to make the camera more what you want it to be like. And by yeah. default, for instance, this top dial here is your film simulations, which we love. Yeah. Fuji is the only camera system that I actually really enjoy using the film simulations with. Um, but in terms of the build of this camera, I think it feels really good in your hand. They've done a very good job with it. It does have the fully articulating screen, which I really like, and some big improvements if we're using this for content creation. Yeah, and I like that we still have a joystick on the back of the camera for helping you quickly select your autofocus points and go through the menu. That's really great. And then, of course, it is the touch screen as well. Now, this is a very small body, but they are, didn't skimp on the battery. We put a tiny little battery in it like some other brands have been doing. I do like they have a W235 battery in here. Same one used in the X-T4 and the X-T5. Fuji's saying we're getting over 700 shots in the economy mode with this battery. That's great for all day shooting with a camera like this. I also really like that we still have an electronic viewfinder for this camera. A lot of hybrid cameras seem to be going away without having an mm. electronic viewfinder when they're a little bit more video focused. But because this is a nice even balance, we still have an electronic viewfinder. It's not necessarily class leading. It's 2.36 million dots. So it's the same in the predecessor. And of course, very helpful when you're shooting on bright sunny days. I want to talk a little bit more about some of the other physical features that are designed for video. So we have a microphone jack and we also have a headphone jack for monitoring your audio and it's also nice that we have a USB-C port as well as a micro HDMI port. This means that we can also just plug this camera in through a power delivery unit and power the camera. You can also plug it into your computer and make this camera into a webcam if you want to do that. Yeah, and in this series of cameras, we just have the fully articulating screen. Again, making this a perfect choice for being a hybrid camera. Now, this camera is fairly small, and it only has a single card slot. It is UHS-2 compatible, but just be aware you can't do any kind of redundancy because you don't have dual card slots. The Fujifilm X-Series system is built around a crop sensor, and this is actually great if you're someone that's traveling or you want something that's easy to bring around with you because, as Dave is illustrating today, <laughs> you can pack a lot of glass in a fairly small bag. Yeah, I'm, I'm running the mind shift today, and I've got everything from an 8mm, this brand new 8mm lens, all the way up to a 600mm lens, all packed inside of this bag, and it's great because it doesn't really weigh you down a lot, but the image quality is fantastic out of these little lenses. So this has a 26 megapixel extra sensor. It's backside illuminated. Yeah, it's the same sensor found in the X-T4 and we really like that. Now to go alongside that 26 megapixel sensor, which we like so much, we have a stabilized sensor. This allows us to shoot much lower shutter speeds and certainly get a much smoother kind of look when we're shooting video. Yeah, we're getting seven stops of in-body image stabilization. So this is fantastic for both photographers and for video. The other thing I should mention is that it's a fairly fast scanning sensor. However, just like the predecessor, we are noticing a little bit of rolling shutter. When you're in electronic, it's nice that you have the option between mechanical and electronic. Now when you are shooting in mechanical, you can shoot up to one four thousandth of a second for your shutter speed but if you're shooting an electronic it opens up the door for you able to shoot up to one thirty two thousandth of a second 
Why is that important? Well, if you're shooting in really bright conditions, you're able to actually shoot without having to worry about ND filters and shoot wide open. So you can get some really nice looks, really shallow depth of field, but be able to do that in bright sunny conditions. That's a fantastic option. Once you start shooting with it, you wonder how you lived without it. Now, part of this whole reason this camera is so good is we have the new X processor 5 in this camera, giving us really good processing speed. We can shoot up to eight frames per second mechanical and to 20 frames a second in electronic. Yeah, you have a lot of horsepower in this camera, and I know a lot of people are talking about it as being kind of like a baby X-H2, <laughs> um, because we're seeing a lot of the same type of features, especially when it comes to the autofocus performance. Yeah, I mean, thanks to that new processor in this camera, the autofocus is fantastic. It's significantly better than we're getting on the X-S10. Yeah, it's making it kind of easy for us to review these cameras, <laughs> or maybe hard, I should say, because a lot of them are all kind of like leveling the playing field in terms of doing really good tracking and autofocus, especially with humans. Fujifilm does a really good job with humans. We're also seeing tracking of being able to do stuff like animals, uh, vehicles, things like that. Effectively, Fujifilm has packed a lot of stuff into a very small body. That's a pleasure to use in both stills and in video. Dave, you're always getting to talk about the trick features, but I bet <laughs> you didn't notice that I can do this. Whoa. That is the smallest flash ever. I mean, it's, it's got so like fun. a guide number of like two or three. It's just very <laughs> satisfying to play with, but it's a nice little feature to have and it's so hidden. I mean, honestly, as, as much as I'm mocking the size of this flash, it is nice to have just a little bit of pop when yeah. you need it, but uh, it's not gonna be something that's gonna illuminate a room by any stretch, but. No, nice little fill, yeah. it's great. But you know what's even cooler is all of the video features that are packed into this camera. I mean, this is really designed to be a true hybrid camera and make your video production that much easier. What I like about it is that they have a lot of features there that if you're not really big into video or new to it and all these terms and technology are kind of blowing you away, they make it very easy to work with. Just get in mm -hmm. front of the camera and it's going to do a lot of stuff for you or you can take it to a whole nother level and then beyond that. Yeah, it is designed to really grow with you as a content creator, so you have more flexibility. So one of the big features that's a change or an upgrade is that we now have 4K 60p internal up to 10 bit. And that's with a slight crop, but it's nice that you have this feature right to the memory card. And if you want to step it up beyond that, we do have F log with this camera if you want to do some post processing. We also have Black Magic support and ProRes through the HDMI. Yeah, and I should also mention that you can use all the film simulations. We have that image stabilization up to seven stops, and you can also shoot open gate. So if you're someone that's doing a lot of vertical video, this format is really helpful in being able to give you more of that vertical look, no matter which orientation you're shooting in. Another thing I forgot to mention, if you're sticking with 1080p, you can go up to 240 frames per second, which is great for video production to throw in some really nice slow motion. And they've designed this to make it easy to use for content creation, especially if you're like a one person show. We have a tally lamp and then with the menu system, we have a new vlog mode that gives you a simplified menu. It's really easy to tap and select the things that you want. So that's nice to have. And of course we mentioned earlier, we have a headphone jack as well as a microphone jack. And so it's nice to have both. You can actually monitor your audio, which is fantastic. This is packed with a lot of great video features that I think content creators are really going to appreciate, but I think this is a great tool for both photo and video. Well, Dave, we took this smoky day and to make the best out of it, exploring one of the small towns nearby, High River. It was a lot of fun. And part of the reason it was so fun is that not just you with as a co-host with me today, Aww, uh, but this camera. We always have fun with shooting Fuji. Yeah, the XS20, <laughs> it does follow the same ethos of Fujifilm. They really have photographers in mind, and I think that they've really also paid attention to what's going on in video and made it easy to use and have adapted to a lot of the features that content creators are looking for. It's always had a really good balance to the Fujifilm cameras. Uh, balance sort of the enjoyability, the functionality, and the image quality all come together in a really nice package. And I love that this XS20 gives us a really decent battery, so I'm not carrying around much a lot of extra batteries. I get a full day out of this without any problem at all. But I love the fact we can throw on like this 23 mil lens, which is one of my favorites in the Fuji system. It's getting kind of old. I'm sure for a new one soon, I would hope, Fuji. But <laughs> uh, the image quality is fantastic out of it. And the fact that I can carry five or six lenses in a backpack and oh, have yeah. everything covered, I love it. Absolutely. And the other thing is they've just made a nice balance of having some of the higher end features, nice processing power, and a lot of stuff that gives you flexibility for both your photography and your video. And of course, we want to know, what do you guys think? What are your thoughts on this new X-Series cameras? Does it check all your boxes? Let us know in the comments below. And are you as happy as I am that we don't need a dongle now if we want to plug in a microphone or a headphone? Make sure you follow us both on Instagram. And if you're new to our channel, please subscribe, hit the notification bell, and we'll catch you again very soon.
Hey, thanks for checking out this episode. If you want to check out more of our recent content, click up here. And if you're a Canadian and you want to support local, check out thecamerastore.com down here.